Hello, my name is Joshua, and welcome to Survivors to Thrivers. This is an astrology podcast about the growth and change in the astrology from the new moon on January 2nd, 2022, to the full moon on January 17th, 2022. Thanks so much for being here, and let's get started. Great. And so here we are. Here is the chart for January 2nd, 2022, the new moon chart. You see up here that the new moon and the sun, that the moon and the sun are conjunct here in the 13th degree of Capricorn. And over here in the full moon, you can see that the moon, the sun has gone from the 13th degree of Capricorn all the way to the 28th degree of Capricorn, conjuncting um, Pluto here. It's a kind of a significant thing, especially with uh, the sun and Pluto um, being conjunct the natal Pluto for the United States, which is something that's going to be happening all across 2022 um, as, uh, as we experience these, continue experiencing these, these gross cultural changes. Um, and so as we look at the changes between the new moon to the full moon, there's a few themes that are that are really standing out to me here. So Jupiter, the sixth planet from the center of our solar system. So think about the sixth hula hoop and it corresponds to the sixth chakra and the number six, which, which uh, consolidates on the power that it's able to expand on. So Jupiter, as we're able to um, concentrate our power, we're able to expand it and this is in the placement is in in the trajectory it's um the degrees it has transited uh over the first few degrees of pisces jupiter is continuing to restructure our thoughts and our relationship to power um which is further highlighted by themes in uh with venus so um additionally mars has moved through a waning square to neptune uh which corresponds to new meaning for our personal roles and personal directions related to gross cultural shifts happening throughout society. Um, the sun has transited or sun is transiting Pluto during this lunar phase, uh, which I mentioned briefly at the beginning, and that's hugely significant both for the United States and for the world in terms of restructuring, um, recreating um, revealing new beginnings, both at the personal level and the national or individual levels um, of how we're transforming our relationship to power and achievement. That's really what this transit's about. And so as we're thinking about power and achievement, um, new meaning for our personal role and direction, that's both at the personal level and at the national cultural level. And so we think about um, the, the gross cultural changes that are happening um, in the United States uh, and around the world through the United States impact uh, through global currencies and other things. Um, and that idea of global currency is emphasized by Uranus in Taurus, which has been something we've been talking about over the last couple weeks with uh, Jupiter's, or sorry, Uranus's relationship to value and currency. Um, and so there are some shifts there. Um, Mercury is during this segment of the lunar phase from the new moon to the full moon in January. Um, Mercury is going through the, through the first 10 degrees of Aquarius, um, illuminated at the full moon in retrograde. And this is helping us recreate our sense of contribution to culture. Um, this will shift a little bit once Mercury gets out of retrograde and then um, goes over the last, the third five degrees in the first half of Aquarius. Um, and then when once it transits Saturn in a couple of weeks, um, that's gonna be a lot about how we move forward with it, within our new structures. So we're still creating our new structures. So I'll give you a little bit more about this. Um, 
the axis of the full moon between the moon and the sun, the two luminaries in our solar system. The axis of the full moon um, on January 17th is the 20th degree of Cancer and the 20th degree of Capricorn. It's emphasizing the illumination of the power of decision and our uh, individual and our gross capacities for inner rebirth and a return to nature. Um, we're deepening our relationship to our own nature, our own humanity, our own nationalism at the national level, individual national character. Um, Pluto has moved almost an entire half a degree during these two weeks, which seems like a lot for Pluto um, since it takes 248-ish years, um, Earth years, to do a whole orbit. Um, and this speed of this movement of Pluto um, at, while it's being transited by the sun during this during this phase of the cycle um, and continued separation through retrograde motion of Venus emphasizes some of the themes that have come up over the last couple of weeks um, since, retro, since Venus has gone retrograde. Um, and it's also emphasizing cultural shifts, <laughs> emphasizing cultural shifts and a re-examination of the power dynamic. Uh, the power dynamic between personal and collective levels. So how do we fit in with our, how do we as individuals fit in with our greater community, both at the, you know, at every level? <clears throat> and then nationally, how does being American or the American identity fit in with the greater sense of being a global citizen? Um, and so another thing to mention uh, is that the full moon, one of the bigger, you know, the next phase out of bigger cycles from full moon to full moon, from the full moon on December 18th to the full moon here coming up on January 17th, it's illuminating next steps, how far we've come and how much farther we have to go, both in our personal missions and our individual slash national missions. So since the personal, natural, changes, new awarenesses that planted themselves um, in, our, in our personal national consciousness at the winter solstice kind of gets a new, oh yeah, we're going back towards the full, we're going back towards the summer solstice, which is kind of what happens over the three days um, when, you know, the earth moves, the sun moves like this over, sets like this over the sky across the year and is farthest north at the summer solstice and then farthest south at the winter solstice. And it takes three days for the change of direction to happen. So as it's coming across towards the winter solstice, it takes three days kind of in this stillness spot before coming back across. So indigenous cultures, well, setting as it comes back across day over day until it gets to the summer solstice. And so what that um, indigenous cultures throughout the history of humanity have seen the first few days after the winter solstice as the time when they get to identify whether or not the sun is gonna come back and go north because they didn't know and they didn't really have science the way we have science today to be able to determine and be able to predict what's gonna be happening um, through the natural rhythms and um, math <laughs> and telescopes and all the things that we have now in this modern scientific age. Um, but the things about life and consciousness that have always been here are still here. Consciousness is just growing and evolving. So from this again, full moon on December 18th, just before the winter solstice through um, the solstice and then through the holidays um christmas is something that i call the equatorial sunrise because you know like i talked about that coming across the sky um it's opening up the possibility or it's illuminating next steps for how far we've come and how much farther we have to go both in our personal missions and our individual national missions 
And so that brings me to the end of this podcast. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, please give me some likes and some shares and all the good things. And I hope to look, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Ahem. <clears throat>